You've been here a couple days now, wandering around a little bit. I see you doing, doing a little sightseeing. I wonder what, what it's been like. I mean, it's enemy ground for you, but it how is. are people treating you? But, you know, I got here I got here Sunday, and as soon as we stepped off the plane, everybody's been very welcoming, very, very nice, taking uh, pictures with fans, and everybody's been great. Of course, I know it's going to be different come Sunday. Obviously, you know, this is Darren Till's hometown, and I am in enemy territory, so to speak. But uh, I, to be honest with you, I'm having a blast, man. I'm having a good time. Have you run across Darren himself yet? He seems like one of those alpha male types, you know what I mean? Have you crossed paths yet? We have crossed paths. I mean, we've, we've actually waved, you know, like across the hall here. We've actually waved to each other. But, uh, no, nah, I haven't really, you know, had, you know, like stared off, you know, or stood off against him. But, uh, yeah, man, we're, we're both ready to rock and roll, I'll tell you that. No doubt. I know people are looking forward to this fight. But talk about the process because we didn't think you were going to take this fight, right? I mean, you were injured and – we didn't know if it made sense for you. I mean, you're the top ranked guy that's been there. He's the up and coming guy. So talk about the process of deciding like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in here and take this fight. Yeah. So when I was first approached, actually, the first time I was approached for this fight was was uh, during the week of the Masvidal fight. I had uh, some people ask me, hey, would you fight Darren Till? Of course, I'm like, I didn't really know who Darren Till was at the time. You know, I had to go back and do my research. But I was like, yeah, man, I'll fight anybody. So, uh, you know, after the fight, I was approached, and, I, and at the time, it just didn't make sense. I had just found out I had broken my thumb and torn a ligament in my right thumb, so it didn't make sense for me to take it at the time when they wanted me to fight. It was a little little, little early. Um, also, I kind of wanted to see where the welter welterweight division was going. There was rumor, of course, Tyron just had his shoulder surgery. There was rumor about an interim title. I wanted to see where I uh, was at the top of that list or not. Obviously, I'm not. So I want to stay busy, man, and, and um, you know, uh, test myself against these, these guys, these up-and-coming guys, you know, the, the next generation, people are saying. And what better place to do in Liverpool? Never been here, which is another uh, excuse, to, you know, reason I took this fight, because I've never been to the UK. And, um, yeah, man, so that's that. I'm ready to rock and roll. Here we are. Did you feel disrespected at all that you weren't included in that, you know, interim title fight? No, because I, I kind of understand where everybody's coming from. I mean, I did fight the champ twice. First one was controversial, but, you know, it was uh, – even the second one was controversial. Um, you know, some people say I won it. Uh, Dana White thought I won the first one. But it is what it is. And, you know, after that last fight, people didn't want to see it again. So I understand that. So, you know, I think after this, after this fight with a good win over, over Darren Till, it just kind of solidifies my spot to be in that number one contender. Um, after that, it really is up to, you know, who fights – Tyron next and what happens then uh, you know whoever wins the fight against the RDA and Colby Covington will face Tyron next and if they beat Tyron I think I'll get that next shot if Tyron wins I may have to fight one more time so it's kind of up in the air so um, um, right now I'm really not focused on that I'm focused on one guy and that's Darren Till so you didn't know about him but then you went and started doing the research obviously you started looking at his fights. What did you think? Tough guy, man. Uh, everybody says he's the big welterweight. Of course, you know when I looked at when I looked at him against Cerrone, uh, I think every you know just about every welterweight looks bigger than Cerrone. But uh, you know I hear he walks around about 215. No worries. I, most of my sparring partners walk around about 220, so 225, 230. And uh, no big deal, but he's a Muay Thai stylist, not your average Muay Thai stylist, you know. Keeps his hands fairly low, good counter puncher, also fairly aggressive. He says he's going to put Muay in, in, inside two rounds, so that leads me to believe he is going to come out real aggressive. Um, I'm used to that. Most of the guys that I face in this division have been aggressive. So uh, when they do that, they, they do tend to run into things. Yeah, no doubt. You talk about that. I mean, I think that's what a lot of people are focused on, the size, right? I mean, you guys are probably about the same height, and I think your reach is honestly pretty similar. He just does seem to be a little thicker. A little thicker. thicker. Yes. I mean, does that, does that factor in at all, or do you think that he carries more power because of that? Probably. I think, you know, usually bigger guys carry carries more. There's more weight behind the punches, so to speak. You know, more muscle on the frame. But, you know, that's something I'm used to every day. You know, I'm used to that. Um, he seems like an explosive guy. We'll see, you know, just coming from uh, his fights, but we'll see when we get out there. But then again, you know, I have a very different style than everybody else. You can bring in all the karate fighters in the world, but it's still, it's different when you step out there and you actually feel it, you know, out there in the octagon in real life, you know, my style. So um, that's something he's got he's to adapt to, and if, if he does adapt to it. Um, that's something that we'll see. But, um, yeah, man, it doesn't bother me really that much that he is heavier. I think he's going to be a powerful guy. I really do. And i got to watch out for that left hand. 
the casual fan, you're the striker versus striker. You know, they say you're similar almost. But when you really break it down, I mean, the new, the subtle nuances between the, the two of you. I mean, what what do you see as the biggest differences between you two as fighters? Um, we do have some some similarities. Both of us keeping our hands down, uh, being long distance fighters. Uh, he does like to throw elbows, so he likes to cover that gap a little bit, but he doesn't like to stay there a whole lot. He he's kind of moves in and moves right back out. Um, I like to throw more, more kicks than he does. You know, lead leg, my kicks come from different angles. I like to switch sides. He's mostly right side forward fighter. Um, so, yeah, we have some similarities. We have some differences as well. So um, it's going to be it, – it, I like these kind of fights, to be honest with you. I, I like the strikers. It's very, very few – um, strikers that I faced in the UFC so far, most of them have been, have been wrestlers or grapplers. Um, uh, I think my last one, uh, Ma Masvidal, I was super excited to take that one because I knew he was a striker. And that's how I kind of looked at it going into this one, man. I'm, I'm excited to go out there, put on a show in front of the fans, and try and figure this guy out. You know what I mean? That's, that's the whole game, is that chess match and trying to figure each other out. You've got such an extensive striking background in addition to mixed martial arts. When you look at his style, I mean, have you ever fought a guy that fought like him? I mean, do you have maybe some experience in your back pocket that's going to help you out? <laughs> you know, I, I, I've been fighting since I was 15 years old, you know. And I think in fighting and sparring guys uh, all over the world, you know, some of the best strikers in the world, Anderson Silva, Leo Tomachita, I've trained with all these guys. And hopefully that will all come down to, you know, this moment and, and, and help me out during this fight. So it does. I think, I think the, you know, a lot of guys kind of stick to one gym, which I, I agree being loyal to that gym. But it's okay to go out and experience other fighters and get used to other styles. Because if you stay with the same sparring partners, you know, you figure them out fairly easy. So, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why I've been to, you know, uh, you know, George St. Pierre's camp up there with Fraza Javier at TriStar, uh, Ray Longo's gym, uh, Matt Serra's, you know, I've been to ATT, I've been, I've been all over the place, man, um, you know, to, to get those feels, to get those different looks. So I think, you know, uh, going out there in front of Darren Till, of course, he's going to have something maybe I've never seen before, but maybe, maybe, but that's, that's why I'm in the sport. You know, I love, I love to try and figure out people. I love the, the, um, uh, the puzzle. You know, trying to figure out that puzzle, so. You know, knowing that you wanted to be in a title fight, right, to be in an interim title fight, or at least have the idea, when it didn't come, was, was motivation, preparation, was it tough to, to, to kind of get up every day and go to the gym and, and be, you know, as intense as you would be if you were getting ready for a Tyron Woodley or an RDA or a Covington for an interim title fight? You, you know, not at all. Not at all, man. I, I love waking up every day. I love going to the gym, love training. I love the... I love the, the, the focus it gives me, you know? It's when I don't have a fight, when I have a hard time getting up and going to train. You know, but once I have somebody and I have that face kind of in my head of who, I, who my opponent is, it gives me no problem getting up and training every day. And, you know, I don't do this for, uh, for the money or, or it's cool, that, that's, a, that's a bonus. And obviously I want to be champion, you know what I mean? But I like it because I love to compete, man. I love to compete, doesn't matter who it is. I'm, who can say they can fight, fight, they're fighting the best guys in the world. Best guys in, in the entire world, you know? Some of these guys, best who ever lived. So, man, I mean, that's, that's something you can tell your kids, man, your grandkids right there. That's, that's, that's awesome. I know everybody thinks of you as one of the nicest guys in the sport, but obviously you're <laughs> going to be the bad guy on Sunday. I wonder, I mean, is there any part of you that would... A, kind of enjoy coming in and spoiling it for this guy that's the young up-and-comer that everybody's high on right now. And also, we know that Dana's going to be in attendance now as well. I mean, would you enjoy maybe turning to him and being like, you know, let's go. you put me in here right. and look at what I did. You know what I mean? Is, yeah. there, is there any party that kind of wants to send a message? It does, man. That, that, I mean, just that thing, it, it, it fires me up, to be honest with you. All right, you know, you guys wanted this fight. You know, you got it. You're going you're gonna to see the best even with Boy Thompson stepping out there uh, this Sunday. So, and yeah, man, it would be cool to go out there. And of course, I know, I know I'm going to be getting the booze, but uh, more importantly is, is, you know, going out there with the W, obviously, but carrying myself as a gentleman as well. So that's, that's, that's more important to me than anything. And, uh, but it would be cool to kind of, you know, give Dana that wink, like, hey, you, you wanted it, you know, you got it. 
Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't see any way this fight isn't going to be fun. I mean, every, obviously everybody likes two strikers going at it, but you, you think he's probably going to come out aggressive. I think we all do. You know, do you think it might be wise to, to be a little bit more tactical, a little bit more patient? I mean, maybe it's not quite the fire fight that everybody wants to see right off the bat? That, I mean, that could, all, that could always happen. And of course, you can always go out there and think you're going to do something, but when you fill out there, maybe it doesn't feel right. There may be some filling out at first. It really depends on, you know, how each other feel as soon as you step out there. You know, we can never predict how the fight's going to start. Is he going to come out aggressive? Is he going to kind of back off a little bit as, as Tyron did? So it could possibly be one of those balls of the wall, you know, slugfest, you know, just nonstop action. And, and I think I'm prepared for that. I think he's fighting in front of his hometown and he wants to put on a show for everybody. So I think he's going to come out and try and put me away to prove a point. So, and that's what I'm ready for.